Hello, OBTV viewers. Welcome to Rock Tracks. I'm Alex Boyer here, along with my co-host, Andrew Polovsky. Today's artist of focus will be Rush, probably one of the most well-known power trios known to man. Right up there with Cream, Getty Lee, Alex Lifeson, and Neil Peart have been rocking together for well over 20 years, put out just around 20 studio albums. The first album we're going to focus on today is their newest 2012 release, Clockwork Angels. Before I get into that, let's take a listen. The camera that thunders onward To the distant dream of the city The camera that carries me onward On my way at last, on my way at last Alright, well, before we jump into the discussion, I would just like to say the album was released in June 2012. It is right around an hour long with 12 tracks. So, Andrew, tell me, what did you think of this album? You know, I really, really liked it. They had some great, um, great songs in it. Caravan, great, we talked about before. The, the bass on that, just awesome. Uh, you know, they have been rock over 20 years, you said. And coming out with such a good album, you know, after such a long time is a hard thing to do for anybody. Definitely. I've always found Rush to put out, they've consistently put out good work. No matter how long it takes, no matter what stylistic changes they make, mm -hmm. that's why people say they can't be grouped into one genre. They've just, they've done too much to be corralled into one genre. Yeah, I agree. You know, you, you have a bunch of different, uh, different types of styles of music influences in influences styles of music just within this one album you know uh halo effect in the completely different from uh the title song clockwork angels i mean just all across the board just within the album mm -hmm. that's one of the things i love about rush and i mean going back to what you said earlier as a bassist myself my ear always always seems to first go to what getty lee is doing mm -hmm. and i'm always impressed he, he is always strong in his work. Yeah, for sure. He, the, has, he has solid bass lines on a ton of songs, uh, you the, know. He, that, that's not to undermine what the other two are doing, because Neil Peart is a great drummer in his own right. One of the best. Yeah, especially during that song, Clockwork Angels. He has great drums right at the beginning of that song. Priceless. Such a great and, album. You know, uh, it, that song did a really good job because uh, Caravan and... Uh, BU2B, the first two songs in the album are sort of slower, but um, a little it, it picks B2B, up. I feel it's a little heavy. But that oh, Clockwork yeah. Angel has a high tempo, high energy, really picks up the rest of the album. That's that's what I love about Rush and definitely this album. Neil Peart is a great lyricist, and it shows here. I mean, some of the things he does, Caravan, just a simple line like, in a world where I feel so small, I can't stop thinking big. That is. That's, that's just such a great line, you know, and there's so many others like it. Mm -hmm, you know, you got some great stuff. Uh, Seven Cities of Gold, uh, another mm. fantastic bass line oh, yeah. we got there. And, uh, you know, it, just throughout the whole thing, uh, you know, if I had one criticism of the uh, BU2B and BU2B2, I feel that they have a similar title in the same field, but I feel both of them are a little heavy and slow. Mm -hmm. it's the style, as you said before, it groups into a lot of different, a lot of different uh, styles, and I feel that that was a little heavy. Yeah, it, it does seem a bit different from how the rest of the album works, but I also think it, it fits in its own way. Uh, I, I know that there was an author who recently made a book out of Clockwork Angels. The hmm. lyrics and stuff in there, I haven't had a chance to read it. I would really like to. It seems like it would be such a good concept. Yeah, and uh, we... We've talked about uh, Neil Peart and the lyricist drummer so much. We uh, <sighs> haven't mentioned You're right, Alex, Alex Lifeson. He He's... does seem to go unnoticed, and his guitar work is great. It kind of it keeps everything together, I would say, because both of those guys, Neil Peart and Getty Lee, they could go, it, a live show, they could just go on and jam whatever they want, and Neil mm -hmm. Peart, is kinda, uh, Alex Lifeson, is cause what I think kind of keeps the song on track. Exactly. That's what, that's what I was just about to say. He keeps the song together and on track, and that's so important in any group, any style of music, from classical to even dubstep. They have some type of, ba some type of beat in the back that keeps the whole song together. But, 
And, uh, you know, you can clearly tell that on all Along from keeping the track together, he's a great guitarist in his own right, obviously. All these guys are fantastic, I would say virtuoso-level musicians. They know what they're doing. You know, and that's important when you have a trio, is oh, that yeah. each one of them is uh, fantastic. And they, uh, I think Alex Lifeson accepts his role as sort of, maybe not the background player, but not as, you know, Especially. Uh, with that, the, the style that Rush takes, with, like the bass kind of, not just playing backbeat, but kind of leading the song along, being a vital part of the song, not just playing along with the, with the guitar. It, it's not something you see terribly often, but it works so well yeah, it's really for what refreshing. they're doing. It's really refreshing. You hear a lot of rock albums with uh, you know, heavy guitar parts, and, and the bass part is truly a so great sound. It's a great, it's a great sound. It's a great sound. The, the uh, electric bass has such a great sound, and I don't think a lot of bands mm. utilize the bass how they should and how Rush does. Yeah, there's also, uh, uh, from what I've noticed with Rush, as of like the 2000s, they've cut back on, because a lot of the earlier albums had like their keyboard stuff, and I can see that uh, Getty Lee's kind of cut back on that. For whatever reason that is, I don't know, but I, I don't think, I, I think the album's just fine as it is. I don't think keyboards would have done much of a difference. Yeah, I think that's just a change in, in time, you know, like... Uh we talk about uh, Yes having a lot of, we're going to talk about Yes a little bit uh, in another episode, but uh, we have uh, Yes uses a lot of keyboard, and that was a bit older of a style. And I think Rush is so successful now because they're evolving with the times. They're using less and less synthetic keyboard and more and more uh, into a different group. And another point on how different and differentiated they are. Right. Well, that, that was a great discussion. Let's move on to the second album. This is an older one from uh, May 2002 called Vapor Trails. Let's, uh, let's take another listen. Uh, I would like to open this discussion. Going through this album, I found, compared to a lot of Rush's earlier work, I thought this was, it, it, it was a lot heavier mm -hmm. than That's most true. of the early stuff. I mean, moving pictures, 2112, all, all that. This one is just, it's heavier, but at the same time, it's got a happier kind of feel to it. That's really hard to do uh, with a band like that, is to make something heavier, slower and like uh, a bit more intense yet make it happier yeah that's difficult to do and i think they did a good job I mean, as well taking a listen to the album uh knowing what happened because before this album neil pert the drummer had lost his daughter and his wife to illness or something and he had taken a four-year hiatus like mm -hmm. just motorcycling mm -hmm. around the country and they, they didn't have Getty and Alex had contact with each other, but they only very rarely had contact with him with postcards. And to come back after something like that and go through like wanting to learn the traditional grip for drums and coming back and making something like that. When I listened to this album for the first time, when I started up the first song, One Little Victory, it, it, it sounded like they hadn't lost a step at all. Yeah, it, and you know, I think that he truly went on an emotional journey there. And, and, and that's just great to see uh, a lot of people, you know, not even just musicians, but a lot of people after something so traumatic that, that would happen would just sort of shut down. But he came back and he came back stronger. And I think that it was important for him to take that four year break to sort of recollect his thoughts. And I, it made him a better musician. Definitely. I mean, there's again, the great lyricisms of, of Neil Peart just, to be able to come back, that album is, it's very, I really don't know how to describe it. It's got an earthy kind of feel to it. Yeah, uh, I think that's a good word, earthy. It's a yeah. down home, kind of not as, not as fantastical of lyrics as say 2112, Fly By Night. It, it's got a feel, a more realistic feel that would, I believe, come from something like this and it works. Yeah, I definitely I agree with everything you're saying because uh, it's just a great, just a great recovery song. And you know, as you said, they haven't been together for four years, and you don't want to come out and try to do too much with an album like that 
and they didn't try to do too much. And I think that was that was really key. And uh, they just tried to make us um, music like they grew up listening to and that they want to hear in the Definitely. future. Uh, one criticism that critics had of the album is that it's very compressed sounding and there's loudness voice going on. I, maybe it's just my ears, but I didn't notice that. I, I thought everything sounded just fine. I mean, what, what, about, what about you? I definitely, I, I noticed it on, on, a, on a couple songs, but uh, otherwise I really, I felt like it was, it was not that big of a factor. Granted, the critics have maybe listened to it a little bit more than we have, especially with, you know. Listened into it more, yeah. listened to it more times. Uh, I will say, I, I did hear it one time during the song Earthshine, mm -hmm, like there are acoustic yeah. guitars going in that, and they're kind of, like, shrouded, they're shrouded, that's the word I'm looking for, by everything going on, and I, other than that, though, I, it's, I, it's unnoticeable to me. Yeah, and uh, I think that um, that sort of earthy feel you got maybe came from the compression and maybe some people took that as purposeful and mm -hmm. others took it as just compression and white noise and I don't know whether it was supposed to be purposeful and I don't, I don't think they would purposely make something compressed but maybe a bit more earthy sounding not as electric sounding and maybe that's what made that unique tone. You're right because some of the other things they noted on it there are no real like traditional solos across this album it's and the bass is like overdubbed Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think the album needed solos, it, uh, traditional solos. It works just fine as it is. And I, I think adding, on, any, adding anything onto that would have taken it away. I agree. Uh, they, they did a good job with the untraditional solos, though I could hear a little bit of improvisation. And uh, I think they picked the right, you know, it's, it's hard as a musician to go in and you could do a solo 15 times and not get anything you like. And I think they did a good job of picking the right solo. I, I remember they announced plans that they were going to remix the album mm -hmm. to deal with these compression issues. But I remember as of 2011, I think they said those plans were going to be downplayed. But honestly, I don't think it's necessary. I think the album, the compression, it, it's part of the sound. You can't take it away, in my mind. Yeah, I, I think it has become part of the sound. And I don't think it would, the album would sound the same and quite as heavy I think that's that's part of the heaviness in there is uh, is you can't um, that if you take that away I don't know the song will definitely I think will start noticing it if you um, if they remix it people will start re noticing it and stuff but um, I like it the way it is and <laughs> you know I mean some people may not but I definitely like it definitely well thank you for listening into this discussion everyone viewers at RBTV. For Andrew Polovsky, I'm Alex Voorhees, this is Rock Tracks, we'll see you next time.